right, 24 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Kind of a touchy subject when you talk about a divorce. If you're married, it's a touchy subject, especially if you maybe maybe borderline. Maybe you're, I don't know if you can say borderline divorce. Uh, Winifred M. Riley is on the phone. She is a psychotherapist specializing in marital therapy and relationship issues. She's a lecturer on marriage and sexuality, a contributor to the Huffington Post, the Good Men Project, XO Jane, don't know what that is, and her blog, Speaking of Marriage. And she's written a book. It's called It Takes One to Tango, How I Rescued my marriage with almost no help from my spouse and how you can too uh winifred good morning how are you i'm well good morning thanks for having me you're welcome where are you calling from uh berkeley california see i think if every wife spoke to their husband the way you're speaking to me there'd be no problems i just like the paradise way yeah <laughs> if i talk to my husband <laughs> like this all the time he'd say the same <laughs> oh no you but you don't huh <laughs> Not every second. Sure. Well, I, I I intend toward it. That's funny. Um, so so um, this is what you do for I mean for lots of people. You help a lot of people uh, mend their ways. I, I'm wondering if there any if there is there anything that can be done like cheating, for example, that is just uh, incurable. Like if once you've done that, forget it. The doors are closed. Well, not so fast. Uh, actually, you may be surprised. Uh, you know, if we're going to start in on that one. Seventy-five percent of couples actually stay together after cheating, and many of them discover that they have a much better relationship after that than they did before because everything comes out, and if you're going to really repair your marriage, it's going to take a lot of courage. You're going to see what you're made of, and people are going to really do a lot of growing. Um, so, you know, I the, the first line of my book is, no matter how far you have gone down the wrong road, you can turn around. It's a Turkish proverb. And that's really the premise that I begin with, that no matter what's happened, if you want to have a better relationship, a better marriage, you can go for it. Really? There's no guarantee, but, but, but I, I never want to tell people you should give up. I mean, obviously, if somebody's in danger by being with somebody, I say you need to go make Oh, sure. Yeah, that's but, a... but, I mean, but barring that one, yeah. you know, you're with a cranky person, you're with a person who wakes up on the wrong side of the bed, you're with a messy person right, right. or a passive person, there's a lot to be done. But, you know, people, people get discouraged, and I, I, I often say that I think discouragement is the main cause for divorce. Discouragement? Discouragement. It's just like, I can't take this anymore. There's nothing we can do. Discouragement. And I say, you know, let's look at what you can do. I'd really like to be married, but I just think it's hopeless. And so I, I try and encourage people to explore things. Uh, if you want to be married to this person, I say to people, I think you can probably figure out how to do it. And not just be resigned, not just, you know, live out your, you know, run down the clock, but, but really right. create yeah. a satisfying marriage. It, you, you just have to begin to uh, focus on yourself, figuring out what makes you happy. Sometimes you have to uh, speak up about things you haven't spoken up about, or you have to, you know, stop trying to get the other person to change. Mm. I'm curious what, what your answer would be to this question, and I'm going to ask you to maybe try to, f to tell me about four different people, and that would be the 20-something the man, the 20-something woman, the 40-something the man, the 40-something woman, all, all those, the, those four people. If you were to ask them to design the perfect marriage or, or marital circumstances, would, would they all be different? Uh, does, does the... Let's say it's the same man who's who's now forty when he was twenty. Would he have a different expectations? And same thing with the women. Well, okay. So I got married. I met my husband when I was twenty-two. And sometimes what I like to say is I've been married three times, all to the same man. That that the marriage that we started with was one marriage. It was a marriage of of young people who had expectations that the other person was just going to. We were going to live in bliss. I mean, that's a little of an exaggeration, but I just was unrealistic about the rigors of marriage. I just thought we love each other. We have common values. How hard could this be? You know, and so so we kind of went, once we were in, in the middle of it, it was more challenging than I'd thought. But the 40-something the 40 person, you're talking about someone 
who's about to get married, or are you saying, you know, like, just like if, someone... To- yeah, maybe, maybe, if you were designing your own marriage. I, 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 yeah, th- so many times I when I think about what men talk about, I mean, everybody thinks men only think about sex, and there's a lot of truth to that, but... <laughs> But, Limited, but some, yeah. Right? But it, but it's yeah. not just. I mean, I, I think yeah, an, right. an honest man who's really thinking about what he wants in a marriage doesn't. I mean, he doesn't leave sex out usually. But 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 there no, are other not, th- other things as well. Do women. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, okay. So if if you know, here's the thing though about designing a marriage. I think we can go. I think we can have a set of standards. We can have a, an idea. I, I prefer to have people have ideas about how they want to behave. I want to be a good listener. I want to be open to change. I want to be receptive. Yes. I want to be bold. Like, if you're going to design your marriage, design yourself. Uh, don't design, I'd like for my spouse to be blah, blah. When people are in trouble, they, I, they say it all the time. I want a husband who blah, blah, blah. And I say, yeah, okay, but what about the husband you picked? What do you want to do with the one you picked? I want somebody who's seven feet tall. Well, your husband is five foot three. What do you want to do? That there's, you know, <laughs> what it's it's like. I what what kind of marriage do you want? Who do you want to be? What kind of spouse do you want to be? Uh, raise your standards for yourself, and people are surprised that they start to live up to their own standards. People are surprised that they that they themselves can change. As much for the better. Oh, you know, okay. People always say, you know, there's a great New Yorker cartoon that there's two two leopards sitting in the kitchen, and the woman says to the to the the, the, the female leopard says to to the male leopard, I'm not asking you to change your spots. I'm just asking you to take out the garbage. <laughs> and it's like <laughs> it's you know it's 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 we're going to be who we are, but why not be the best self that we can be? And so that's what the book starts with. Figure out what are you doing that if you change that one thing, you know you would begin to have a better marriage starting today. But is it ever that simple? Is it ever because the husband isn't taking out the garbage? Um, well, the, take, the husband taking out the garbage is sort of the tip of the iceberg. And because I have a whole chapter in the book called The Big Picture. And what that's about is what are people really fighting about? So if, you're, if, you're, if your husband doesn't take out the garbage and you say take out the garbage and he says not if you're nagging, well, I wouldn't nag you if you didn't take out the garbage, you know, back and forth. What you're, you're really not looking at the garbage. You're looking at an, a pattern of engagement where somebody is, is willfully frustrating the other and not recognizing the impact. Or flip it over, or somebody who is essentially um, bossy and demanding and has set up with their spouse a parent-child relationship. You know, and so nothing is ever exactly as it seems, which is why I almost never work with individuals, because somebody can come in and they tell me their version and I and I know that all, I'm getting fifty percent of the story, but I don't know which fifty percent is accurate. And so you know, there, that there's always two sides. You know, I can sort of sort of relate to what you're saying. I, I was divorced in 1990, I think it was. It's been a uh-huh. long time now. Yes. <laughs> but I can remember I did not want it, and I remember uh, saying, "Can we go to a therapist?" And we did. And I can remember. Uh, I can remember coming to the conclusion that there's nothing this therapist can say that's going to change my wife's mind. She just wanted out. And Uh I I was really trying. uh, But when I realized that I I should just surrender, that released everything. I was fine. I I mean, I wasn't totally fine. But I mean, I stopped stopped fighting for it. Well, you can't make someone want to be married to you. Yeah. But where? But if, but if it were the other way, if you were the person who was on the fence, and I was working with you, I would be asking you whether there were things that you think you could do that would make a difference. Whether there are things you were not, <clears throat> there were things you were not talking about. Whether there were things that, whether there were patterns of interaction that were frustrating that you that if we worked with them they might change you know if if you're working if if you're married to somebody 
who every time you begin to say, you know, something I'd really like, and their answer is, don't start with me, <laughs> boom, and, and you just stop coming forward, I would say that's the place, that's the place you have to work. I, I want people to be empowered, to take risks, to move into, you know, to, 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 to begin to design the marriage that they want, to begin to be the person they want to be, and then you see what happens. There's no guarantee, but people end up, you know, getting divorced because they feel like they're all out of options, and yeah. somebody says to them, you know, well, if the two of you aren't into the same thing or into into working on it, there's nothing you can do. Well, communication is so key to a relationship, and sometimes people don't know how to talk to each other. Maybe one person wants to talk, and the other one just ignores that kind of dialogue. Yeah. So, so you know, if, if we're going with the one-to-tango approach, let's say you're with a person who ignores dialogue or doesn't want to talk. The other person, rather than pounding on the door of that, uh, the other person needs to say, how do you think we're going to work things out if we don't, if we don't talk? What's your plan? And if the spouse says, I don't have a plan, uh, you know, it's like, well, let's see if we can do something because, you know, life isn't going to, marriage isn't going to fix itself all on its own. That, 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 that you, you know, you, you have to not give up. Somebody says, well, I don't want to do this thing. You know, it's like, it's like, imagine, you know, salespeople. You say, I'm not sure I want this one. If they just said, yeah, okay, sure, bye. You know, instead, yeah. mm-hmm. they're going to try and persuade you. They're going to try and, they're going to, or the spouse says, okay, you don't have to talk. Can you listen? That, that people, you know, just don't give up. Don't, don't begin to live the lowest common, nomin- common denominator life because your partner doesn't want to do something. Start to do it. You know, I mean, it, people always, people, you know, there's this characterization of like, like, like you're dealing with somebody's dead weight. And, and really, you know, if you talk to a person who doesn't talk, it doesn't mean they're not hearing you. It doesn't mean that nothing you say is getting in. The question is, why are you, you know, what do you, what's your vision for marriage that you think you can come home and watch TV all day, you know, watch TV, not help with the kids, and not talk to your spouse, and think she's going to be happy? Where did you get that idea? <laughs> you know, so, yeah, well, you know, that, well, gosh, that, that makes yeah. so much sense. The the other day we watched this film um, about the found the McDonald's story. Uh, the, the movie's called The Founder. It's a current movie. But mm-hmm. I, but anyway, the guy Ray Kroc who started who founded it, whatever the guy who took yeah, the, took yeah. the thing, he was on the road so much that his his marriage. That part of the story is his marriage, mm-hmm. and he eventually left her right. and and uh, married somebody else. But you could see in her face, the actress's face, that she was feeling. There is no marriage, and, and and because he was working, so in his mind, he, I guess I mean not, not using that story, but using any guy's story that's working, working, working. You're working, thinking you're contributing to the marriage, but you're really not. Well, you know, if you're working, 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 I mean, there's a choice. Um, you know, maybe let's say you're, you know, I, my husband actually took a job. He he was offered this consulting job and he spent almost a year in Mexico um, oh my gosh and, and so yeah he would come home about once every 10 days for about oh, you know, my three days we had some of the best conversations because we would get on the phone every night for 20 minutes and we would actually just talk to each other we had more. We talked more in that. They, there was no distraction. Really, we would. You know, it was so interesting. We we began to be. Yeah, we had some great conversations because there was no interruption. The kids had gone to bed. There was no distraction. I made. You know, I could tell when he had the TV on in the background, and I would just he would turn it off. We would just sit, and we would talk. We gave each other undivided attention. It was very interesting to see. But, wow. But if, but if you can't figure out how how to solve a problem, I always say any two people can figure out how to do anything if they want to. 
That's a, that sounds like a tool. I mean, do you use that? Like, do you give couples ideas? Hey, I mean, not telling them to go to Mexico for a, a year, but <laughs> yeah, go send your husband on a long boat ride. But you yes. could go. But you could go into the other room. Go into the other room and call me on the phone. <laughs> I don't know. Me, well, I I often say, you know, people phone me up and they say, "What's one good piece of marriage advice?" And I say, "Turn off your cell phone." reduce the distractions, spend 15 minutes just talking to each other about something besides business. And it's just, that's, it's, it's people are, people are, are rarely doing one thing. You know, they're on the phone playing Scrabble, uh, listening, watching a TV show, and filing their nails. All, you know, all at once. And, and they're not, and they haven't looked into each other's eyes for five minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, and so, so I, I think you know that my Mexico story is is useful because we had it was really challenging, and we f- we decided we were going to figure out how to do this. We weren't going to let this disrupt our marriage. It was challenging at times, yeah, but yeah. you know, but it was like we were going to figure out how we were going to make the best of it. What does your husband think about the title of the book, How I Rescued My Marriage <laughs> <laughs> yes. with No Help from My, my Spouse? Husband, okay. My husband is a great man. He's generous. And, um, you know, my the editor who, who had first uh, suggested the who had first suggested the subtitle, her version was How I Rescued My Marriage with Absolutely No Help from My Husband. And I said, that's a divorce maker. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going with that one. I said, because it's also not true. Because what happened is that I took the lead. This is really about taking the lead. This is not about being the only person doing anything. I took the lead in changing some of our interactional patterns, Mm -hmm. and he eventually joined in the effort because things were starting to get better. You know, if you're tugging on a tug-of-war rope and somebody stops tugging, things start to get better. So the whole tone of our life started to change, and he began to, to be putting in as much effort as I had. I didn't know at the outset that that was going to happen, but that is what happened. Well, marriage is a uh, compromise between two people, but you can't, one partner can't compromise so much that they lose their own career or their own identity. I mean, it has to be give and take on both sides. Well, you know, compromise is a funny word, and I try to discourage people from thinking about it that way. And I try to think, and I talk to people about generosity, that can I move toward you and give you the thing you want? Sometimes, sometimes not. I try to say yes to as much as possible, but if I have to say no, I have to say no. And so I'm not actually ever giving unless I really, unless it's coming from generosity, in which case we can do a lot of things that aren't our first choice. As long as we don't feel like we're compromising our core values or ourself or giving up, up something that's important to us just to keep the peace or just to stay married. Do you know what I'm hoping? I'm hoping that somebody who has a beautiful marriage finds the book and reads it, and it's not just a book you pick up when it looks like the end is near. I'm, you know what I mean? I'm ho- cause Absolutely. You, the, it, it's really about... It's about having the marriage you want. Yeah, the information it, you're it's giving really is... not just for troubled couples. Yeah, I would imagine that somebody who's happily married wants to know how to, you know, because if you look at your friends who are divorced, you're going to say, oh my gosh, I don't want that to happen to me. What happened? You know, um, so I think... You know what happened in a lot of... Absolutely. Absolutely. In a lot of cases, what happened is people gave up on the things that were important to them, or they put in a half-assed effort, and they wondered why the thing wasn't very good. And you have so many things that are familiar over the years. Say people are married 50 years and then all of a sudden one partner wants to end it and you just kind of blindside the other partner. I mean, gosh, you've got children, you've got grandchildren, you've got all this history and all of a sudden one person wants to throw it all away. Well, you know, it's rarely all of a sudden. It's usually somebody finally said something. And, you know, and it doesn't mean that, you know, 
that their decision to, to divorce is coming from a solid place. They might just have given up or be fed up or not have any tools or have fallen in love with somebody else. But 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 it's it's almost it, it, it sometimes comes as a surprise because people aren't really talking all along about what it's like or what they want or taking risks. Uh, the book is called It Takes One to Tango, How I Rescued My Marriage with Almost No Help from My Spouse and How You Can Too. It is written by Winifred M. Riley, who is out in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And I have a copy of the book here. If you want the copy that was sent to me, you can call me right now and I'll leave it for you on the desk. Uh, the rest of us will have to go buy it. Winifred, do you have a, a website dedicated to yes. the book? Okay, yes. I have a, a website. It's onetotango.com. Okay. Uh, there are links. There's stuff about the book. There's stuff about me. Uh, there are links to bookstores. Uh, there'll there'll be some videos and and interviews that I've done on the radio. And is the word one spelled out? One two tango word, dot com. Yeah, all words. O n e t o t a n g o. I just I just went to the okay. site. We're very easy. So I have to ask you this question: How did a New York girl end up in San Francisco? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> she might know your friend. <laughs> um, actually, I think uh, at the time, it, you know, it was uh, to to it, to go a bit as far away from where I started to have it, you know, so an, an adventure. I, I kind of came for an adventure, and I loved it here, and I never left. I really had no idea I was going to just move here and never leave. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, yeah, um, I started out on the East Coast. Uh, just. Um, if a couple has children and the children are still um, under 18, should the people stay together for the sake of the children, or or should you they know, leave? It's a, that one, it, it, that one is a, is. I don't think anyone c- should stay together for the sake of anything except for wanting to be married. I do know that people. It gives people pause. What's what's going to happen to our kids? I think it's a worthwhile question but i don't think that two people staying married uh for the sake of the kids gives the kids uh all that much because what the what they what the kids get to see is two unhappy people making a lot of sacrifices Mm, yeah if you're going to have a good if you want to work and have a good marriage that's a gift to your kids if if you if if you're going to sit there if they're going to get stuck in the car with you fighting you might as well you might as well just move on uh, the, the common things that often uh, will break a marriage up are, I'm guessing, I'm just guessing, this is a lay person, I just do a radio show, so it's money, <laughs> uh, I'm guessing, see, money, time spent together, um, I don't know, okay. do, do religious, yeah, Jack, religious money. does religion ever separate a well, couple? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I think basically the inability to deal with our differences breaks up a couple. I want to spend more than you. I want to have sex more often than you. I want to go. I want to save more than you. Uh, I want a big house. I want a little. I want to, you know, have a little place. Uh, it's it's not so much uh, how people agree. It's mm. what people do. How people disagree and how they how they handle that that I think makes or breaks it. Winifred, thank you for being on the air with us today. Again, the book is called... Oh, it's been a pleasure. It takes one to tango. Go to one to tango.com. You'll see everything you need to know. I'm sure the bookstores will carry it. Uh, thank you, Winifred. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. You're Have welcome. a good day. Bye. You, you too. Gala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. 